All right, so what we're going to do here is tie a uh, foam cricket. Uh, it's actually really easy to tie, and there's uh, several leg variations that you can add to this fly. Let me put it up there so before I forget, so they're messing with it. Uh, and I'll show you the different leg variations when we get there uh, and how to tie them in. Uh, I've just got the uh, pheasant tail. Uh, knotted legs on this one, which is what I'm going to use for the overall pattern, but uh, You can also use just some round rubber legs uh, It's probably the easiest out of all of them uh, to tie in uh, Tying in wise the pheasant tail is probably the hardest, but then you can also go by manufactured like cricket legs That some of you may have seen and I'll show you how to tie those in too so you can really just have your pick of what you want to do uh, when it comes to this pattern because uh, you can really do any of the three. Um, now to start off, what we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to attach my tying thread in no particular place. And the reason why is uh, is because I'm going to double a hackle. And if you haven't doubled a hackle before, this is the easier way to go about it. So I'm going to show you how to double a hackle real quick. Uh, I'm going to take my, you know, the way I do it anyway, there's numerous methods, but... I'm going to take my hackle, pinch it between my thumb, uh, right thumb, right index, and I'm just going to start stroking some of these feathers or the barbs back off the feather, off the stem, kind of like so. And I'm looking for an even break. Let's see if you can kind of see that. So there's an even break in the barbs on the stem. And I'm going to tie that point in real quick, and I'm just going to wind this forward. Now you got to be a little ginger on this when you do this so you don't snap the stem, but I'm going to draw all these barbulates out to the side. I'm going to try to get them to a 90 degree angle the best I can. Something like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lick, I'm going to hold this in my right thumb right index because, because I'm right handed. I'm going to lick my left thumb left index and I'm going to start to kind of grab and collapse. And then what I'll do is I'll take that stem and I'll hold the barbs up just like that and I'll pull down and then what that does is is it starts to align your barbs off your hackle to the back right here and I want to have enough for uh, one and a half to two turns maybe three depending on how uh, hackle happy you want to get on this pattern but I want to do this beforehand uh, because it's just much easier to handle now than it is uh, during the actual tie itself. So uh, a lot of the times this stem will break, uh, your barbs will break off, so on and so forth. So I try to just take care of this now, uh, and then I can come back to my material in a minute. I figured I'd just show you this uh, because, uh, well, I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a beginner video and. Uh, a lot of you may have not seen this kind of a technique before. What really needs to happen is you got to kind of pinch that stem a little bit when you do it. So you're pinching that stem down, and when you pull it away, they start to fold to the back. So uh, they don't have to be perfect, but something along those lines is good enough for this pattern. If you start getting into more advanced patterns, you'll probably want to refine your technique a little bit. All right, so I'm just going to take my thread back off. Now that we've covered all of that, now to start the pattern, what I want to do is I want to start my thread uh, about a bodkin. Uh, eh, I'm a little, little close. I want to come back to about a bodkin and a half width to two bodkin widths behind the eye and start that thread. Yeah, that's about right. About a half there. And I'm going to put a thread base down along the whole body. When you get to the point where you feel comfortable that this tag can come out, you can take it out. There, you do not need to keep it in. So whenever it's comfortable for you, take it out. And then I'm going to continue my thread base back until I get oh between the hook point and the barb. Maybe one more wrap back like that. Oh, I forgot to show you. I'm just using a. Uh, wet fly hook, a number 10 uh, lightning strike, uh, nothing fancy here. Uh, you can use a dry fly hook if you want. 
<clears throat> you can go from probably a size eight to a size oh, 14 on this, some, somewhere in there, typical cricket size. Uh, once I've gotten to the rear of where I want to tie, I'm going to take my thread, I'm going to advance it back forward. I'm just going to kind of keep a nice underbody. Don't really need a nice underbody here, but uh, it's good practice. Uh, it's always good practice. And I'm going to bring my thread up until I've got about a bodkin distance between my thread and where uh, I started. So I can go another wrap or so forward. Maybe two. There we go. That's good enough. Next, uh, we need some black foam, black foam strip. This is two millimeter craft foam. You can get it at the fly shop. You can get it at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever you go. Uh, and the distance, or I'm sorry, the width <clears throat> that I like on this is I will gauge it by putting the foam to the bottom side of the hook shank, kind of like so, so that the foam fits the gap. And, and your gap is between the bottom of your shank here and your barb there, or your, I'm sorry, your hook point there. And so that's, that's about what I want. And so to prep this material, it's super simple. I'm just going to take my scissors, I'm going to kind of make an elongated cut, and I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing, just to create a point, something about like that. And I'm just going to line this up so that this point is sitting right above my thread. And what I'm going to do here is just to help have the thread grab the foam and not dig into the foam as much, I'm going to wax my thread here. And let's clean that off. Went a little grease heavy on that one. So, now I'm going to line this up. Let's do a couple loose wraps over. So I'm sitting kind of like that. And now I'm going to start to advance my thread to the back. You know, you're going to have to kind of fight a little bit to keep your uh, foam on top of the hook shank. And you're going to have to jump your thread too. You're not going to be able to do touching turns going back. So each time you'll see kind of like a little bubble pop up. And that's okay. We're going to take care of that. And I'm just going to kind of continue on until I reach the back of the fly. And you, you'll be able, able to identify that because that's where we stopped our thread. So you should be sitting something about like that. Next, I'm just going to take my thread. I'm just going to kind of cross wrap this going forward to kind of tie this down a little bit. And I'm going to turn my thread or my, I'm going to angle my bod. Uh, <laughs> let me rephrase that. I had too many thoughts going through my head. I'm going to reverse the angle of my bobbin and start cross, cross wrapping back to do the same thing. There we go. See, much better. <laughs> Okay, so something like that's pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to kind of make sure that your foam is sitting right on top of the shank and that it's even so that when you pull it back, you don't have any thread sticking out. I guess you could have a little red tag back there or something if you wanted to. So next what I need is another black hackle. Not the one we doubled over to start with, but just a different one. And... You want it to have it have it relatively long, uh, so probably three times the hook shank length at least. And the distance and how long these barbs are really makes no difference. Uh, so I'm just going to start by doing that and just ripping some of the barbs off. I'm going to come in with some scissors, trim that out. And all we're looking for here is that these barbs stuck to the wax are lined up right about there so I mean you may have, I, there's just a smidge of uh, stem still showing 
I'm going to wrap that in. Now you can tie this in several ways. You can tie it in with the stem just rolling up the side as so. You can lift this up and put a few wraps behind if you want. There's not really a right or wrong way here. And if you put the wraps in behind, the, you know, your hackle is going to stand up like this. Uh, it makes for a little bit neater wrapping, and then you can bend your uh, you can bend your stem up to the side and just kind of jump it forward, catch it in, cut it off, whatever you got to do, uh, as long as it's tied in nice and tight. That's what matters here. So okay, so we're sitting about like that. Okay, if you're going to use legs like this, that are like the pre-manufactured rubber legs, this is the part where you'd want to tie these in. And whoop, you just take these and bend them over. This is how I do it anyway. I'm sure other people do it differently. But you just kind of bend them over so that they're together like so. And I'll just open that up. I'm going to slide it right underneath. And there's usually like a little groove right here where like the beginning of the thigh is. And I'm just going to take my thread and choke up a little bit and catch it. Oh. There we go. Just like so. Uh, now, once you've done that, you can do several things here. You can glue these in place. You can just wrap these guys forward, avoiding your hook point, uh, you know, because you're going to build up some kind of underbody here, even though it'll be like a little lump and bump. You can tie it in a few times, glue it down, cut this out. Uh, so there, you've got some options here. Uh, personally, I like to try to keep these on uh, and not cut this front tag part out. But uh, you can do any of that. If you don't like where your uh, the legs, the back legs are sitting, you can come from behind, lift everything up, bring your thread around a few turns like that, pull tight, and it'll it'll start to prop your legs up a little higher like this. But uh, anyway, so that's if you're going to use those kind of legs on this pattern, this is where you want to put those in. <clears throat> That's not what I'm using, so we'll move on. Next, what I want to do is create a dubbing loop. And just get my little pendulum there. If you haven't created a dubbing loop, it's super simple. You just use your finger to catch the thread. Maybe I should show that just in case some of you haven't seen that, but um, maybe some of you are catching up. But uh, you just take your th thread, draw it down, bring your uh, bobbin on the back side until it kind of creates this little pendulum. Cross your thread over to the back side, all while your finger's still holding that open. Wrap back a turn or two. Now that's tied in, and there's your dubbing loop. So anyway, we're going to bring this, or uh, advance our thread forward back to about a bodkin width or so behind our starting point. <coughs> Excuse me. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep these open by putting my uh, uh, dubbing spinner in there. And I'll grab my wax and we'll grease the skids on this one here pretty good. Uh, now this part is optional. You don't need to put a uh, dubbed body on there, uh, let alone a UV ice dub body. You could just wrap back and forth with your thread and make a, a thread body. Uh, matter of fact, I think the, actually the uh, original pattern called for that. I kind of like to add a little little extra and put the UV dub body in. Dub dubbing body in. There we go. So I'm just going to use some Ice Dub UV Black. And we're going to get a decent amount out of here. Something 
something like that. Now it's a little bit more than I normally would take. So what we're going to do is we're, I'm going to kind of pinch the middle of it. I'm going to take my left thumb, left index, pinch the top, pull down with my right hand. Now I'm going to realign and start stacking these fibers just so that all these individual little strands start to maneuver and uh, lay somewhat in the same direction. It's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, but uh, it does help. And so once I have a decent little amount that can kind of be stretched out, something that looks about like that, I'm going to insert it in between my two strands of thread. And I'm just going to slide it up. And this is why the wax plays such a big part right here, because it grabs a hold of that. It doesn't let it fall out from side to side. Uh, some of the synthetics will really fall and mess with you if you don't have wax on there when it comes well when it comes to dubbing anyway a as well as other materials so that's that's a pretty good amount in there if you can kind of see all of it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch right below the dubbing give the twister a spin grab the twister let go and it's all going to form a rope and I'm going to do that a second time Okay, now once I have it like so, you'll see that there's some unevenness. I've got a little skinny spot here, it gets a little beefy over here. What I can do is just come through and start to even that out a little bit by just pulling away from the spots that have uh, more dubbing than they should until it becomes just a bit more even of a noodle like that. And you can just save the other stuff and put it back on the side, put it back in with the rest of your dubbing. Next, you just need some hackle pliers, and we're going to pinch right on to, uh-oh, got some geef in there. I'm just going to pinch right on to my, uh, my thread and my dubbing loop. Now I'm free to trim out my twister, and I'm going to twi uh, trim this part out just to get it out of the way. And I'm going to start to wrap this forward, or palmer it forward. Like so. Trying to keep it even as possible. I guess you could make one part bigger than the other if you wanted. I'm just going to take this all the way up right to my thread where it's hanging and tie that off. If for some reason you're lacking a little bit here, you can uh, you can simply just dub on uh, just the, whatever you're missing right onto here and uh, fill in the gap. But what we have here is pretty good. I kind of hit that one pretty good. So once I trim that out, I'm going to put about oh I don't know five or six turns going to the rear to make sure that I've tied that all in correctly. And you can lift all this up, pinch it off if you want. So should be sitting something about like that. Next, I'm going to take this hackle. I'm going to start to kind of pull the barbs out from the side just to help them open as we're going around. Now, this is a rooster hackle. You can use hen in a pinch. Uh, you know, it's just going to be a little softer. It's going to want to uh, not, you know, uh, pop open as well. And it doesn't have to on this pattern because it's all going to get cut off for the most part. So, but uh, so I'm going to take two turns at the back one and a half to two turns right at the back so that my hackle's sitting like that. Now I'm going to start to advance that forward evenly spaced uh, about a bodkin width or so. I like to measure a lot of things off of bodkin widths because it's just a tool that I have handy. Uh, you know everybody has a bodkin handy and so uh, not all bodkins are the same but uh, whatever one you're using, you can. It's a solid gauge for you. Hold on, that's not. I got something. That's something sitting funky right there. It's messing with me. I'm gonna pull a little more of that off. Okay, let's try that again. There we. Well, it's right there. There we go. And I'm looking for five or six turns here. Uh, I don't like to skimp, maybe even seven. I don't like to skimp on this, and I'll show you why. 
So once I have got to the front, I'll bring my thread just a little bit more forward. I'm going to tie this off like so. I'm going to fold everything to the back and put in a few more wraps right on top of everything. And your hackle should be, or your, the tip of your hackle be, should be shooting out of the back. And we can just trim that out. That's just not sitting quite right, so I'll put another couple in. That's good enough. Okay, next. Oh, the fly pulled down just a fuzz. There we go. That's better. Next, I'm just going to grab all of my hackle and I'm going to pull up. I'm going to get my scissors. I'm going to come in. On the top side, I'm going to come in just kind of tight with the body and trim that all off just like that. Now I can rotate my fly over. Now on the bottom side, I'm going to leave just a little bit more than that. Not a lot, just a little bit. The whole idea here is, is to get just a little bit of stimulation on the water. Uh, and this doesn't have to be perfect. You can leave a few extra long, uh, whatever you want to do there. It's not, you know, this is not, uh, there's nothing precise about this until we have kind of a shaved bug that looks like that. And I kind of cut those about the same length. But I like to try to leave the ones on the bottom just a, just a fuzz, maybe like a sixteenth of an inch longer. So something, but something about like that. Okay. I'm going to wax my thread again because we're going to catch in the uh, foam here. So now I'm going to draw my foam forward like so. And I'll, a lot of the times I'll turn it, the fly to me to make sure it's right where I want it. I want my thread. Whoa. Uh -oh. I want my thread sitting right back where the hackle stopped. And I'm going to just put a couple of wraps in right there. Like so. Now you could totally make a beetle pattern this way too. Uh, you could just kind of like leave these legs off or shorten the legs. Uh, or leave your hackle underneath here a little bit longer and uh, make a beetle. So now with a couple of turns and are, uh, that are uh, loose, I'm going to come back and I'll you know, put three or four more in that are tight. That's going to take care of that. Next, I'm going to come in and trim out all this stuff up front. I'll leave myself about a quarter inch in front of the eye of the hook, right up front. And then this will give me plenty of room to work with at the end. I can grab it and maneuver it if I need to. If you're going to use, uh, oh, sorry jumped ahead of myself. Next what we need to do is uh, tie on the uh, doubled over hackle like we had. This is the easiest way to do it is at this point. We're going to tie it so that it's, it stands up on top of the fly to one side like so. We're going to take we're going to take the tip, fold it back over. towards the rear and put in two or three more turns right on top of that stem <clears throat> so that it catches. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next, if you want to add the rubber legs, this would be the time to do that. You can simply slide these up into the side, put a wrap in so that they dangle like this, and then you can just add an, another set on the far side and you can uh, you know you can pull them back and trim them to the length that you want or pull them forward and you know you grab both sides and trim them all the same size uh, like that but we're not I'm not going to use that but uh, that's how you tie in the rubber legs definitely the easiest to tie in on this pattern and I'm going to get rid of these stragglers while I have the opportunity next what I'm going to do oh, I'm going to come trim out that tip. 
Now I'm going to take all of my folded hackle or doubled hackle and I'm going to make sure my thread is up right at the back side of the front piece of foam. Now I'm going to rotate this over and we want at least one full turn here or two but when you do this what ends up happening is all of that hackle is pushing to the back kind of like so you will go three here just for fun Oh, my fingers is greased. There we go. I'll put a few more wraps in there. Just to hold it in place. Let me get one more right there. Okay. Now you can kind of come in and trim that out. Any stragglers that you have sticking out and about, you can gently fold them to the back and time in so that your hackles sitting to the back like so and we'll trim that guy out I'm not gonna keep adding wraps here so just like that next I'm going to add my pheasant tail legs you can add these before or after your soft tackle. And these are just knotted pheasant tail legs. And so what I'm gonna do is I, I kind of like adding them after the hackle just because the barbs kind of help uh, push the legs out a little bit better. Uh, if you've seen a dead cricket float like if you if you've used it for bait their legs are usually splayed out to some degree um, and I think this hackle being in place first helps that effect but you can totally tie these in first and then come back and add your hackle I've done it that way too both are effective so next what I want to do is just kind of line my leg up where it sits and I pre make all these legs so that I have them on hand and I try to get the knot, because not all the legs are created equal, but I try to get the knot uh, in the legs to line up right about the bend there. And then what I'll do is I'll come over with two loose wraps so that we're not... Uh -oh. I need to wax my thread here. But I want to do two loose wraps right here so that these uh, these legs don't get crunched so I've got two loose wraps and I can kind of still play with them a little bit get them where I want them so I'm going to do two loose wraps I'm going to see if it's sitting about right that's sitting pretty good. Next what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that foam back with a loose wrap. I'm going to come up front. I'm going to tighten it down up front. What that does is, is it locks the leg in up front behind, in front of the foam and not back here. Uh, and then it locks that leg in place. Now I just pulled another set and I cannot seem to... There, there. So next I'm just going to do the other side. And I'm going to try to make them about even. So when I come back through for my second set, I'm going to make the jump back to where I tied the first two loose wraps in here. Pull that foam back. I'm going to make the jump with my thread to in front of the foam behind the eye. A couple wraps and tighten. Let's see, and that one kind of that one kind of bent out a little bit, but there you go. So that's kind of the effect that you're going to get doing it with with these. Now you can make make some more tight wraps and kind of tighten all this stuff down. Before I move, I got a whole lot of wax in my fingers. Before I move my uh, thread to the back, I'm going to come in and trim this out right in front of the eye. I'm going to tie this part down. 
Can I clean it up? I'm going to push my thread or my foam back forward, jump my thread to the back. And now I can kind of tighten all that up just, just by simply pulling down with my thread. And it's going to tighten. Uh, next, uh, this part's optional. Um, but I'm going to just take some more of the UV dub. Again, I'm going to wax my thread just a little bit here. I don't need a whole lot. My fingers are so, let's see what it's doing. Oh, my fingers got so much wax on them, it's knotting it all up. <laughs> let's try that again. To be fair though, I kind of grabbed some stuff that was already knotted a little bit. So I can see if I can use that up. All right, now I'm just going to come in and put some turns in. Kind of try to help beef this area up right here. Yep. I'm going to jump my thread to the front to right behind the eye. Next, I'm going to take my foam. I'm going to lay it down using my left thumb, left index. <clears throat> I'm going to just gently take my thread over the top a couple of turns. Make sure that I'm lined up just, if you can see that, when, my, when I let go of my, bo uh, my bob bobbin, my thread is sitting right behind the eye. Make two turns. I'm just going to pull down. It's going to pop this foam up a little bit. I'll make a couple more. Now I'm going to take that foam, fold it back, jump my thread to the front. I put in about three or four turns here, maybe five. Now when I'm doing that, my thread is pushing to the back. So it's forcing that foam back and not forward, right? Because if it's too loose, you're, if your thread wraps are not advancing to the back, uh, what they're going to do is they're going to start to slide down over the eye. Uh, now you can whip finish this uh, bug right on top here. I personally like to fold everything back and put some whip finishes in right in between everything. Sandwich it all together. Pull it nice and tight. Trim the thread. Now for this piece of foam here, what I typically do is line it up with just the front of the uh, the front part of the hook eye, like so. Uh, just because I'm not sure if you can quite see that or not, I'm going to come just a little bit in front of that, uh, and then to finish it, I'll just kind of come in and cross cut the head a little bit. It's so much harder to do, and you can't see quite the angle. So it kind of gives a little bit of a profiled head like that. It's a, again, that's a little bit bigger than I normally would make it, but it's hard to show on a video. Take some glue, come right in on top, and I'm just going to dab that whole thing with super glue. And then I'll kind of come back and wipe it off a little bit with my finger, let the rest of it set. Uh, and that's it. I know it's a long video, but we were trying to shoot, uh, I was trying to show several techniques on different legs and different things that you can do uh, to tie this pattern uh, so that you can just kind of use up what you got. And uh, so uh, pretty cool little pattern, you know, fish it for some gills. Uh, you know, trout would definitely hit this too the right time of year. So anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Always appreciate that. Like it. I guess that is the thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you wouldn't mind. Always appreciate that. And uh, of course, share it. Uh, you can check out other things that we're doing or that I'm doing uh, along with other people over at Fly Time for Beginners on Facebook. You answer the questions and that's your golden ticket in. We do all kinds of fun stuff there. We have uh, international fly swap. We do lives all the time. Uh, we do classes, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So you can check that out if, uh, if you're so inclined. So uh, other than that, uh, give a, you know, give this little pattern a try. It, I promise you it's not going to take you 35 minutes to tie. So, uh, other than that, happy tying, take care and we'll see you next time.